Good afternoon everyone. We are the third group and we are assigned to discuss about risk and risk management. But before we start, I'll introduce first my group mates. Ms. Kayla May Barit, Ms. Candy Shane Cabalse, and Ms. Hannah May Sagiyon. Every day we take risk as they are an accepted part of our everyday life. Risk is always present wherever we are and whatever we do. We already faced and will still face numerous of different risks throughout our lives. But we should always remember not to take risks blindly. Kasi pag, kapag hindi natin ito na manage ng maayos, maaaring ito ang magiging rason ng ikapapahamak natin or ikalulugmok ng business na mayroon tayo. Isa sa mga pinakamalaking challenge kapag nag-face tayo ng risk ay yung pagde-decide kung ano ang gagawin dito. Many people have struggled with the idea of knowing which risk to take and which to ignore. Thus, it is important to have wide knowledge about it, understand its true meaning, and learn how to properly manage it. Here is Ms. Kyla Barit to explain further about risk. Before we can talk about risk management, first, we need to fully understand what risk is. So, what is risk? According to Oxford English Dictionary, risk is the chance or possibility of being exposed to danger, harm, or loss. It is the chance of something happening that will have a negative effect. Risk involves uncertainty, focusing on negativity, and it signifies undesirable consequences. However, taking a risk can also result in a positive outcome. So, risk is simply a chance or possibility that a loss might occur. Diba, everyone takes risks. No matter what we do, there is a chance or a possibility that a loss can occur. So, for example, kunwari naglalakad ka or nagsishopping. And by just doing that, bigla kang hinold up. Then you suffer from a loss since nawala yung bag mo, nandun yung mga essentials mo like cash, um, cards, ganon. Or kung hindi naman hold up, kunwari naglalakad ka and then na, na dapa ka, edi consider din na loss yon since na injure ka, nagkasugat ka. Kasi nga, na, nagasgasan ka, nawala yung flawless skin mo. So, loss yon sa'yo. So, risk can happen everywhere, kahit na saan ka man, anong oras pa man yan. We are always um, exposed sa danger, sa harm, or sa loss. Um, there are various definitions of risk. And here we have four um, definitions of risk. The first one is from the Institute of Risk Management or the IRM. They define the risk as the combination of the probability of an event and its consequence. Consequences can range from positive to negative. As I have said earlier, diba, taking a risk can also result in a positive outcome. And yung positive outcome na tinutukoy dito is yung gain na makukuha mo in taking that risk. And yung neg negative naman is yung loss. The second one is from the ISO Guide 73 or yung ISO 31000. Effect of uncertainty on objectives. Note that an effect may be positive, negative, or deviation from the expected. Also, risk is often described by an event, a change in circumstances, or a consequence. So, mas um, malalaman natin yung mga definitions na to pagka pumunta tayo mamaya sa categories of risk since doon matatakal natin yung mga um, different na circumstances when talking about risk. The third one is yung Institute of Internal Auditors. They define the risk as the uncertainty of an event occurring that could have an impact on the achievement of the objectives. Risk is measured in terms of consequences and likelihood. And the last one is from the Orange Book by H.M. Treasury. Uncertainty of outcome within the range of exposure 
arising from a combination of the impact and the probability of potential events. So, there are three categories of risk. The first one is the hazard or pure risk. The second one is the control or uncertainty risk. And the last one is the opportunity or speculative risk. So, dun muna tayo sa hazard or pure risk. So, these are the risks that are beyond human control. It has two outcomes, complete loss or no loss at all. There are no opportunities for gain or profit. Pure risks are generally insurable, no measurable benefits, and pure risks are generally prevalent in situations such as natural disasters. So, when we say pure risk, this is the chance of a loss only. So, kapag loss lang yung pinag-uusapan natin kapag pure risk. So, for example, when there's flood, the fire, earthquake, or any other type of natural disasters. So, di ba yung outcome is always a loss, di ba? So, wala naman sigurong natural disasters na ang effect is again sa part mo. So, laging loss yan. Complete loss or no loss at all. Complete loss if may mga properties ka na nasira because of that natural disaster. Or no loss if kahit na may dumating na um, mga uncontrollable circumstances, hindi nasira yung mga properties mo, then yun, no loss at all yun. So, lagi lang natin tatandaan na when we are talking about pure risk, um, loss lang. Loss lang yung pinag-uusapan natin dito. Um, there are three categories of pure risk. Personal, property, and liability. So, under personal, ito yung mga um, premature death, sickness, um, disability, and unemployment. Mga ganon. Pagka naman property, example, kunwari, um, a car damage in a collision. So, hmm, let's say na nabangga ka. Walang nangyari sa'yo, pero yung sasakyan mo nasira. Yung magiging loss ngayon doon, yung pagpapaayos mo ng um, sasakyan. Kung major yung mga damage niya, di ba? So, instead na i-invest mo sa ibang... Um, investment. Ila, ipapaayos mo na lang yung sasakyan mo, ba? So, loss yun. Um, another example is fire, wherein loss lang talaga yung magiging outcome. Kasi, oh, for example, warehouse, nasunog yung warehouse mo. Pwedeng yung warehouse yung nasunog, tapos yung inventories, o oh, himala na hindi nasunog. So, yung loss mo doon is yung pagpapagawa ng warehouse. And if yung inventories naman yung nasunog, edi yung loss mo doon, yung pambibili mo na naman ng other inventory mo. So, yon yung tinatawag nating pure, um, pure risk under property. <clears throat> and the last one is yung liability. And the most common example of this one is yung legitation. Okay. Um, alam naman natin na we cannot eliminate risk, di ba? So, we can only reduce risk, avoid risk, accept risk, and yung sinasabi natin, transference. And yun yung mga um, tinatawag nating ways to mit mitigate pure risks. The second one is yung control or uncertainty risk. So, when we say control or uncertainty risk, this is the chance that controls won't operate as intended. So, ito na yung sinasabi ko kaninang example ng Institute of Internal Auditors. Di ba nga, they defined the risk as the uncertainty of an event occurring that could have an impact on the achieve achievement of the objectives. So, an example of this one is yung when control fails and if there's a person who's responsible for monitoring that system that people fail 
di ba nga people make mistakes naman so there's always a chance of that yung not operating effectively so magcreate ng loss yon and yung loss na yon is yung hindi pagka-achieve doon sa main objectives so yun yung tinatawag natin control or uncertainty risk and the last one is the opportunity or speculative risk Um, uncertainty about an event under consideration that could produce either a profit or a loss. Made as conscious choices and are not just a result of uncontrollable circumstances. Three possible outcomes of opportunity are speculative risks. Something good, something bad, or nothing. Not insurable in the traditional insurance market. There are means to hedge speculative risk such as diversification and derivatives. So kung kanina, under pure or hazard risk, um, ang pinag-uusapan lang natin doon ay loss. Dito naman, meron na tayong gain, meron na tayong um, loss. So, um, simply speaking, when we are talking about speculative risk, this is the chance of a loss or a possibility for a gain. So, an example of this one is gambling. So, kunwari na sa um, casino ka, you are at the blackjack table, tapos puma tumaya ka, oh, 100,000 or 1 million, let's say 1 million. Um, so, the Depending sa cards na hinahawakan mo, pwede kang manalo ng 2 million or more. So, that's the gain. Yun yung something good na outcome ng opportunity or speculative risk. Or, you can walk away with nothing. Yung, 100, yung 1 million mo, natalo. So, that's um, the loss naman. Yung something bad na outcome ng opportunity or speculative risk. Or pwede namang hindi ka matatalo, hindi ka mananalo. So, staying even, even doon. Uuwi kang, meron pa rin yung 1 million pesos mo. So, you're um, taking a speculative risk when you have a chance for your loss. But there is also a possibility for a gain. So, dito sa categories of risk, lagi lang nating tatandaan na when we are talking about pure risk, Loss lang yung pinag-uusapan natin doon. And while when we say control or uncertainty risk, ito naman yung um, hindi natin pag-achieve doon sa main objectives natin. And yung last, pagka sinabi naman nating opportunity or speculative risk, dito, um, mag meron, magkakaroon tayo ng gain, magkakaroon tayo ng loss, or staying even. So, yun yung dapat lang natin tandaan when pinag-uusapan yung categories of risks. Importance of risk. Operations will become more efficient because events that can cause disruption will be identified in advance and actions taken to reduce the likelihood of these events occurring, reducing the damage caused by these events and containing the cost of the events that can cause disruption to normal efficient production operations. These are known to be unavoidable. We can't even predict when is the exact time they actually occur and how big is their impact, especially on the organization. It is already part of the life of a business. Risk is important because it helps the company to enhance its performance, especially in making a decision and in the formulation of long-term plans. Most importantly, risk should not be seen as a threat but also as an opportunity. Example, um, since wala namang company or business ang walang goal na gusto nilang makamit, the company must focus on its goal. Since my goal ang company and hindi may iwasan ang risk, syempre darating at darating siya among the way and of course will do everything in order na maabot yung goal. So, ang role ng risk is that siya yung magbibigay sa atin ng opportunity para gawin natin yung alam natin na nanatapat and it is to create more effective and efficient plans and strategies na ito consider na yung mga possible disruption. Ang effect nito is that mas broader na ang sakop ng ating decision, therefore, mas wiser na decision. 
another example, um, example scenario. Ito ay um, scenario na nagpapakita na hindi natin dapat gawin na ay itrato o tignan ang risk na isang threat but also as an opportunity. So, ang risk dito is that there is the potential presence of toxic ingredients in materials purchased from suppliers. These ingredients can be harmful to the environment and to the health and safety of workers and consumers. This produces compliance risk regarding chemical regulations and reputational risk. So, ang risk dito is that yung isa natin supplier, yung pinoprovide niyang material is there is a potential presence of toxic ingredients. So, it means hindi siya um, good or harmful siya sa health and safety ng ating workers, especially ng ating mga consumers. So, ang opportunity na mahanap natin dito is that, um, syempre, before natin, before natin ma-identify yung opportunity, kailangan muna natin um, tignan kung Kung yung suppliers na yon, supplier natin na yon, is that um, gaano siya, gaano kalaki yung part niya sa pagsusupply ng materials sa ating company. So, gagawa pa tayo ng mga, um, may mga hakbang pa tayo na dapat gawin, either through questionnaires or on-site audit. Titignan natin kung ilang porsyento um, yung part nila na nagsusupply sa atin. So, if example is 30% lang yung part nila, 30% na yung supplier natin iyon is uh, yun yung nabibigay nila ng material. So, meron pang 70% na kung saan pwede natin kunin yung mga hindi toxic na, uh, I mean non-toxic. Yung mga non-toxic um, na materials na pwede natin gamitin sa ating company or uh, yes, para sa ating inventory ka so, um, result nito is that, yung opportunity nito is that, um, siyempre liliit yung suppliers natin, it means that um, magpo-purchase sa, tayo sa kanila ng mas maraming materials, um, lalaki yung, i-increase yung volume. So, anong effect? Siyempre, this present, presents opportunities for cost savings because of bulk purchases. So, di ba nga? parang sa the um baklaran ganun na um di ba meron din silang sabi nila na full sale na parang nababawasan ng 10 pesos or 20 pesos each or per item kapag bibihin natin siya ng in bulk so yun yung opportunity na mahanap natin doon kasi since nabawasan tayo ng supplier it means um, mas marami na tayong o ordering sa mga remaining na supplier so Effect din yun is that, um, 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 ano tawag na dito? Effect din ito is that, bababa yung cost natin kasi nga, meron either makakakuha tayo ng discount kasi nga, lumaki yung vol volume na ino-order natin sa remaining suppliers. Next, processes will be more effective because consideration will have been given the selection of the processes and the risk involved in the alternatives that may be available. Also, process changes that are delivered by way of projects will be more effectively and reliably delivered. So, parang na-explain ko naman na kanina to na kung bakit siya maging more effective, more efficient, kasi nga, i-consider natin yung presence ng risk na kung saan mas wiser and mas wider yung decision na gagawin natin. And, syempre, yun nga, part na yung race sa ating decision kasi hindi naman natin siya maiiwasan. So, strategy will be more efficacious in that the risk associated with different strategic options will be fully analyzed and better strategic decisions will be rich. Efficacious refers to the fact that the strategy that will be developed will be fully capable of delivering the required outcomes. Knowledge about the risk will give the organization various options on how to deal with potential problems, the possible effects, and how they can be minimized. This will help companies act more confidently on future business decisions and an efficient formulation of strategic plans that would greatly deliver the organization to their required or desired outcomes. Now, let's define what risk management is. 
Risk management encompasses the identification, analysis, and response to risk factors. It means attempting to control as much as possible future outcomes by acting proactively rather than reactively. Therefore, risk management offers the potential to reduce both the possibility of a risk occurring and its potential impact. So, when we say proactively rather than reactively, um, it means that we should act before a situation becomes a source of confrontation or crisis. So, alam ko lahat naman tayo uh, gumagalaw o lumayaban para sa future. Tulad na lang ng isang business or company na may gustong i-achieve in the future. Yun yung mga goals, um, objectives, mission, vision. We are working today for the future. And since hindi naman tayo sigurado sa future kung anong mga, mga mangyayari, and it is important to consider the future as part of our plans. Kasi nga, um, di lang plans, strategies then and decision today. Kasi nga, um, para sa future naman yung ginagawa natin. Kasi we are, hindi natin ginagawa yung para lamang today, pero para rin sa future. So, um, since ang risk ay hindi naman talaga maiiwasan, like for example, sa company risk na mabangkat. Kasi there are uncertain events in our life na part na siya ng mundo natin. But what we can only do is to prepare and manage the risk. Dito na papasok ang risk management um, kasi gusto natin i-manage or i-control ang mga risk na ito in order to minimize its possibility of occurrence or do something to at least prepare to protect ourselves from its possible impacts. Kung hindi natin siya kaya pigilan, at least yung gagawin natin is that i-manage, i-minimize natin yung mga possible impacts niya. Kasi kung hindi natin ito gagawa ng solusyon, there's a possibility na ma parang mas malaki ang magiging impact nito at mas marami ang i-incur natin na loss. So, risk management is as important um, procedure because it provides a company with the tools it needs to properly identify and manage potential hazards. It is simple to reduce a risk once it has been identified. So, furthermore, risk management provides a firm with a foundation on which to make informed decisions. Tulad naman ng mga sinasabi ko kanina na yun nga, yung risk, gagamitin natin siya as an opportunity. So, yun yung magiging foundation na ating mga plans or yung mga informed decisions natin. So, risk assessment and management are the best ways for a company to plan for events that may obstruct progress and growth. When a company assesses its plan for dealing with potential dangers and then implements structures to deal with them, it increases its chances of becoming successful. So, pag yun nga, yun rin yung isang um, secret para magkaroon ng successful or para maging successful lang isang business or company kasi kinoconsider nila yung risk. Mini-minimize nila yung risk. Kasi kung hindi nila mini-minimize or hindi, at least hindi sila gumagawa ng paraan or iko-consider yung um, presence ng risk, so, mas malaki yung impact. Uh, possibility is mawasak yung company, may stop yung operation niya. So, in short, hindi siya maging successful. Another, risk management focuses on identifying what could go wrong, evaluating which risks should be dealt with, and implementing strategies to deal with those risks. So, first is to identify what are the possible risks that can occur along the way. These risks stem from a variety of sources, including financial uncertainties, um, legal liabilities, technology issues, ano ba ba? Um, strategic management errors, accidents, and of course, natural disasters. So, example nito yung mga calamities, mga flood, baha, financial loss, or loss of customers or investors. So, hindi lang, lang doon natatapos yung mga example. Maraming Marami pang mga possible risk na maaari um, um, ma-experience ang isang company. Pero ito ay nakabase, depende 
sa kanilang operation or situation and of course their location the location of the company or the business dahil hindi lahat ng business or company ay pare-parehas ang kinakaharap na risk next ay matapos natin ma-identify kung ano yung mga risk na yon um, kailangan natin evaluate kung um, which risk should be dealt with so in risk evaluation we should consider for yung apat first one is the importance of the activity to your business the amount of control you have over the risk the potential losses to your business and any benefits or opportunities presented by the risk so unang una the importance of the activity to your business so sa lahat ng risk na nabanggit kanina nabanggit ko kanina Um, dapat alam natin and piliin natin yung mga dapat mas pagtuunan ng pansin. Yung base kung gaano siya ka-importante, especially kung maapektuhan nito ang operation ng ating business. So, kailangan natin malaman kung gaano ka-importante yung activity na yon na maapektuhan ng risk. Next, the amount of control you have over the risk. So, dito naman sa part na ito, dapat alam natin sukatin if we have the ability or capability to control the risk. Control meaning the capacity or power to manage that risk. And, syempre, if alam natin kung ano or, yeah, kung meron ba tayong control sa risk na yon, of course, um, Um, papasok na dito kung i-accept ba natin or i-reject yung risk na yon kung kaya ba natin siya i-handle, i-control. So, the acceptance or rejection of risk is dependent on the tolerance levels that a business has already defined for itself. So, nakadepende siya sa company kung kaya ba nilang controlling yon or hindi depende sa kanyang um, effect. Depende din sa company. Next, potential losses to your business. So, ngayon na sinabi ko kanina, kailangan natin tignan kung ano ang mga risk na dapat pagtuunan ng pansin. Yan yung tignan natin yung amount of control na meron tayo over that risk. Yung importance ng activity sa ating business. Of course, kung gaano kalaki yung impact nito sa overall operation ng business. So, one potential loss that can worry some involves the employees and human error. Yan. Yung mga employees natin, may mga times na, na, na nakakagawa sila or nag, meron silang mga nagagawang mistakes na maaaring maapektuhan yung relationship natin with our clients and customers. So, may, kailangan natin i-measure and i-consider kung um, how much is the impact of every risk. Like, for example, lahat ng mga risk, meron silang mga um, possible na ang mag ang, ang lahat ng risk is that meron yung mga potential losses na idudulot nila meron yung mga each risk has its own potential losses lahat ng risk may mga may mga impact sila and isa na yun is yung possible na um, pagkalugmok or yung mga maaring mawala ng sira sa business next is that any benefits or opportunities presented by the risk Indeed, the term risk has a negative connotation for many people and they prefer to hear it a little as possible. Siyempre, pag sinabing risk, parang nakakatakot, nakaka-worrisome like, nakaka na. Nakakatakot. Like, professionals understand that risk does not always have to be a bad thing. Naturally, risks should not be handled lightly. Since their effects can prohibit a firm from achieving its goal, syempre, kaya nang sinabi ko na naman kanina na risk, um, yun yung pupunta or haharin sa atin in achieving our goal. Pero sabi, nga, sabi ko nga kanina, hindi, hindi tayo mag i doon porket hinarang tayo ng risk, gagawa at gagawa tayo ng paraan in order to achieve that goal. So, yun yung titignan natin, yung mga opportunities na makikita natin sa mga risk na yon. There is the ito yung ito na yung risk can also present possibilities for improvement allowing a company to become more efficient or gain a competitive advantage yun na yon. Kasi sabi ko nga kanina hindi dapat tinitignan as threat ang 
risk kundi bilang opportunity. Gaya na lang ng example na binigay ko kanina nung una-una. Ngayon, after ma-identify ng um, company and ma-evaluate ng company yung mga risk, um, risk will be better prepared and have a more cost-effective way of dealing with them. So lastly, yun na yung implementation of strategies to deal with those risks. So, part ng risk management ang pag-formulate ng mga long-term strategies para ma-minimize yung mga risks. Hindi naman pwede na in-identify mo lang, in-evaluate mo lang yung risk. Kasi siya, pwede ba, if may problem tayo, kung may risk, may solution. Dapat gawa tayo ng something, gumawa tayo ng solution para ma-solve or at least, sabi ko nga, ma-minimize or ma-manage natin yung risk na yun. Um, sa, yun nga, sa business, or we need to create a solution to at least minimize kasi kung hindi naman tayo gagawa ng paraan para i-reduce um, ang mas first na magiging effect nito is that mas mabigat ang isasuffer ng organization kapag hinayaan lang. Implementing strategies is like aligning risk management with overall business objectives and instilling a culture of continuous improvement. It is a process of identifying loss exposures faced by an organization and selects the most appropriate techniques for treating such exposures. Now, let's go to the objectives of risk management. So, before a loss occurs. So, ito yung tinatapag natin na pre-loss objectives. So, these are goals that a business should strive for before any losses occur. So, unang-una, prepare for potential losses in the most economical way. Analysis of cost of safety program, insurance premium paid, and costs associated with the different techniques for handling losses. So, ito, preventing or minimizing losses are the most cost-effective ways for a business to reduce the cost of losses. So, as they say, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Example of this um, are insurance. Insurance ng company or insurance ng mga heavy equipment natin. Um, kailangan natin ang mga ito in order to maximize safety and reliability since they are one of the most important pieces, especially na sa mga manufacturing companies, lalong na, lalong, lalong na yung mga heavy equipment. Kasi nga, yun yung ginagamit nila para mag-produce ng kanilang product at yun yung ibebenta nila at pamung um, at, at in order for them to produce or maka earn sila ng profit. And they are used to produce a product that the company would sell na pinagkukuhanan nila ng profit. It must be decided how much risk to retain and what types and amounts of insurance should be purchased. So, nakadepende yan sa um, equipment, of course, and uh, of course, sa insurance company, kung ano yung mga um, kaya nilang um, i-cover, ano yung mga kaya i-cover ng, um, ng insurance. So, the insurance must cover sudden and unforeseen loss or damage which physically affect the said equipment. So, yon dapat cover na yung mga losses na, and any losses, especially cover dapat na yung mga sudden and unforeseen losses or damage. Next, reduce anxiety. Certain loss exposures can cause greater worry and fear for the risk managers. Another pre-loss objective is to reduce anxiety since some, um, some loss exposures can cause catastrophic losses such as major lawsuits. Certain loss exposures can cause greater worry and fear for the risk managers, not only for them but also for key executives, their, ex um, their stockholders. Um, the role of risk managers is to strive um, to keep the worry, anxiety, the panic associated with all the loss exposures to a minimum. So, yun yung responsibility nila. Responsi responsibility ng mga risk manager. Um, just for example, yung um, a potential catastrophic lawsuit from a defective product can create more anxiety um, um, then, uh, yeah, more anxiety and concern than a tiny loss exposure or a tiny loss from a minor fire. So, syempre, mas malaki 
um, mas malaki yung magiging impact if there is a potential um, catastrophic lawsuit doon sa defective product ng company. Because, syempre, if nangyari yon may possibility na yung mga ibang customer ma, ma, ma um, if ever ma may spread may spread yon yung chismis na yon just for example or just for example malaman ng mga um, ibang consumers yung issue na yon of course there's a possibility na hindi nila tatangkilikin yung product ng company um, yung effect non bababa yung sale bababa yung profit so yon Siyempre, mas, mas mag-worry ang mga risk managers doon if lalong-lalo na kung yung risk na yon is that connected sa product na pinoprovide nila for the consumers, lalo na ang mga consumer, doon tayo kumukuha sila yung mga taga-gamit or doon tayo kumukuha nga ng profit yung mga sales natin. And with this, it is important also na Um, e, meet natin yung mga legal obligations ng company. At dito na maiko-connect yung pangatlo. Ano yung pangatlo? Meet any legal obligation. So, government regulation may require a firm to install safety devices to protect workers from harm. So, this means that the firm must meet certain obligations and impose on it. So, for example, where government regulation may require a firm to install safety devices to protect workers from harm. Just for example, yung mga tamang um, yun, yun na, installation ng safety measures to protect workers, yung right disposal of hazardous materials, yung proper labeling ng um, mga um, ng mga products. Um, similarly, a firm's creditors may require that property pledge as collateral for for a loan must be insured. So, yun yung mga example ng mga um, yun sabi dito, yung mga any, um, legal obligation na dapat ma-meet ng company. Um, the risk manager must see that these external imposed obligations are met. So, yun nga. Ang tatlong ito, kaya ito tinawag na pre objective kasi bago pa man mangyari yung mga inaasahan nating na risk, gumagawa na tayo ng paraan para maiwasan ang mga, uh, ang mga ito para ma-minimize natin ang mga ito dahil kasi pag hindi natin gagawin ang, mang, ang mga ito, yung mga pre objective, there's a possibility na, uh, yun na sabi ko, mas, mas malaki yung i-incur natin na loss or yung magiging damage nito sa ating company. Another objective of risk management is after a loss occurs. So, unang-una, survival of the firm. After a loss occurs, the firm can resume at least partial operations within some reasonable time period. So, Survival means that after a loss occurs, the firm can at least resume partial operation within some reasonable time period if it chooses to do so. So, of course, syempre, di ba, after every disaster, kailangan natin is yung bumangon ulit at lumaban ulit, mag-survive. Maybe maraming nawala at nasira, pero okay na for the company na makatayo sila kahit pa paano makapag-start even partially pa lang. Yun nga yung sinasabi dito. At least partial operation. Basta meron yung mga signs na kaya pang mag-survive ng company. So yun, dapat, yun yung um, isang objectives ng risk management. Dapat, kahit after... Um, after yung after dumaan yung risk na yon after maka-incur ng loss dapat kaya pa rin ng company na maka-survive yun yun so the company should consider what efforts need to be taken to get operations up and running again as soon as possible so yun dapat yung gawin ng company para maka-survive ulit yun yung um, dapat alamin nila kung ano mga dapat nilang gawin nakaready dapat sila. Yun yung ginaga, ginagawa ng mga risk manager. Umi, na, nag-iisip sila in the future. Anong gagawin? Uh, pag nangyari to, ito yung gagawin natin para makasurvive tayo ulit, makapag-operate tayo ulit. This step is significantly more subjective because only the company can determine what they require. So, syempre, yung company lang naman yung nakakaalam kasi na sila yung mag-audit. 
sila yung may alam sa kampanil, kampanil nila. So, sila rin yung nakakaalam lang kung ano yung kailangan, ano yung nawala, ilan yung nawala, ilan yung nasina. So, yun nga, yung kampanil lang yung nakakaalam or makakaalam nun. And then after that, dapat the company should start by determining kung ano yung yung operations na vital for the business. And finally, the company need to know where the operations can resume if the original building is no longer available. So, yun nga. Sinasabi ko nga kanina, tumitingin sila in the future. So, it means nakikita nila itong mga possibility na to na mangyari. Yung babalan sila ng building. So, kailangan mag-survive ng company. Kailangan gumawa silang paraan. If ever man na mangyari ito, kailangan silang gumawa ng plan kung ano yung gagawin nila para mag-operate ulit. Yan. And next, continue operating. Ito na. The ability to operate after a loss is extremely important. A public utility firm must continue to provide service. Otherwise, business will be lost to competitors. For some firms, the ability to operate after a severe loss is an extremely important objective. So, pinaka-importante siya. Bakit? Kasi nga, sabi nga kanina, hindi maiwasan yung mga risk. So, yung pinaka-importante na objective ng, um, ng, ng, ng risk management is yung, yun na, minimize yung risk. And of course, kung kaya natin minimize yung control yung risk, of course, yung gagawin natin is to continue after that loss. After yung loss na um, naidulot after yung loss na experience ng company. So, kailangan natin mag-operate ulit. Yun yung pinaka-importante. And, pwede magsimula yung company by determining which operations are vital. Kung ano yung mga pinaka-importante sa uh, business. Of course, pinaka-importante pwede i-include dito yung mga um, staff, yung mga equipment na gagamitin. Of course, dapat i-consider natin yung mga yon kasi just for example sa mga manufacturing company kailangan siyempre nila ng equipment kailangan nila ng staff of course sa kahit anong business naman kailangan ng staff kasi hindi lang naman kaya na ng may ari of course di ba yung mga employees nila kailangan nila yan so start na yon para mag-continue na mag-operate ang isang business nakalagay rin pala dito na a public utility firm must continue to provide service otherwise business will be lost to competitor. So, um, this is particularly true sa mga certain firms, kaya na lamang na mga public utility firm. Kasi kailangan nila ma na i-continue yung um, to provide service. So, example ng mga public utility is yung mga entity na nag-provide ng goods and services to the general public. Sa karamihan, or sa halos sa lahat ng tao. So, yung mga public utilities nito, example nito ay yung mga, yung mga common carriers as well as yung mga corporations na nagpo-provide ng mga, for example, ng mga gas, yung electric, ele electricity, yun, yung mga water, ganun, yung mga um, television cable system. So, kung isipin natin yung mga ito, yung parang yung pinoprovide nila na mga goods and services is that um, importante siya or kailang, necessary siya sa mga tao, necessary sa atin yung mga yun. So, kailangan nila na mag-continue na mag-provide um, unang-una dahil kailangan ito ng mga consumers nila. And second is yung possibility na matatalo sila sa mga competitors nila. Lalo na yung pag public kasi maraming kakompetensya tulad ng nalamang ng mga gas. Meron yung Caltex, Shell, o Centrum, Petron, o diba? So, if, for example, um, um, merong napagdaanan or nag-incur ng loss ang isang gas station, for example, pero wag naman sana yung Centrum. So, kung hindi sila mag-o-operate agad, syempre, yung mga customers nila pupunta sa ibang, sa mga um, sa kanilang competitor. So, yun. Yun yung magiging effect. If, lalo na na, lalong-lalo na sa mga public utility firm, kung hindi sila mag-operate agad, mawawalan sila ng consumers, therefore, um, matatalo sila, or yun nga, mas mauuna na yung mga competitors. Number three, stability of earnings. 
Earnings per share or EPS can be maintained if the firm continues to operate. So, dito, itong stability of earnings, nako-connect siya sa number 2. Yun, yun yung continue operating. So, syempre, pag nag-continue na mag-operate ang isang business, meron silang may earn na profit, of course. So, yun. EPS is an important financial measure na nag indicate sa profitability ng isang company. No, and EPS is the portion of a company's profit that is allocated to every individual share of the stock. It is a term that is of much importance to investors and people who trade in the stock market. The higher the earnings per share of a company, the better is its profitability. So, yun na. Yun na yun. Pero sabi nga dito, however, a firm may incur substantial additional expenses to, to achieve this goal. So, example, um, cost na mag-operate at another location or perfect stability of earnings may not be attained. So, yun. Nasabi naman na, na yun na, important yung earnings per share na i-coconnect siya sa, um, sa pangalawang objective, yun yung mag-continue um, mag na mag-operate ang isang business kasi nga, yun sinabi ko kanina mag-earn mag sila ng profit of course, Pero, hindi lamang dapat na i-stop doon na nag-earn ng profit ang isang business. business Dapat, ma-maintain din nila yon Dapat, masasabi natin na um, yung business na yon or yung company is masasabi natin na nag-earn talaga sila ng profit or um, profitable. Yung company na yon na nag a ng investors or yun yung rason para mag-stay pa yung mga investors. Kasi, importante rin yung mga investors uh, sa isang company. And second to the last, continued growth of the firm. A company can grow by developing new products and markets or by acquiring or merging with other companies. A firm may grow by developing new products and markets or by acquisition and mergers. The risk manager must consider the impact that a loss will have on the firm's ability to grow. Gaya ng sinabi ko kanina, ulit-ulit na sinasabi ko, yung risk ay hindi dapat tinatrato na threat but an opportunity. So, yung mga opportunity na yon is yung mag-develop ng new products. So, um, um, so matapos yung, uh, yung tatlo na sinabi ko kanina, yung survival of the firm, continue operating, stability of earnings, so susunod continued growth, growth of the firm. So, paano natin makikita yung growth ng isang firm? Makikita siya sa kanyang... Um, um, sale, yung mga ganon, yung employment, yung asset, yung market shares, and profit. So, yung sinasabi natin kanina na stability of the earnings, at least, parang yun na lang yung magiging minimum. Minimum niya. Yun yung minimum na dapat i-maintain lang niya, hindi siya bababa doon. So, yun nga, kailangan ng growth ng isang firm by developing new products. Yun, nga, yun yung mga possible na way para mag-grow yung, yung firm. Just for example, pag new products, lalo na pag uh, gusto or nagustuhan ng mga consumers, tatangkilikin nila ito, tataas yung sale ng company. Yun, and yung pagbili or pag-merge nga with other companies, yun. Siyempre, pag nag-merge ang companies, mas malaki yung possibility na mas maging profitable sila kasi pag nag-merge ang dalawang company, mas malaki, mas possibility is syempre yung mga kaalaman yung mga meron sa ibang company na wala sa ibang company yung mga meron sa isang company na kailangan ng ibang company pag nag-merge yung dalawang yon syempre mas malakas mas, mas maganda of course yun nga, mag-grow yung dalawang company na yon yun, mag-grow mag sila and yun yung isang objective ng risk management yun na after ng loss na na-incur ng isang business is that um, dapat after makasurvive, makakontinue ng operation, yung stability ng earnings dapat din is may, meron siyang growth. Last but not the least, minimize the effects that a loss will have on other persons and on society. A severe loss can affect employees, suppliers, creditors, community. A severe loss can adversely affect employees, customers, suppliers, creditors, 
and the community in general. For example, a severe loss that requires shutting down a plant in a small community for an extended period can lead to depressed business conditions and substantial unemployment in the community. So, um, ang mga nabanggit kanina ay ilan lamang sa mga paraan na hindi lamang ang business ang kailangan ma-survive, kundi pati ang mga employees at maapek at maapektuhan ng business. So, So, dito, kaya nang sinabi ko kanina, yung example, yung shutting down um, a plant in a small community, syempre, if mag-shut down ang isang, ka, um, ang isang planta, it means um, titigil muna yung operation nito. It means, hindi makakapagtrabaho ang mga employees. So, maapektan sila. Uh, hindi lamang ang mga employees, kundi pati yung mga customers na bumibili ng products na pinoprovide or binibenta ng company suppliers of course na pinagkukuhanan ng company and yung mga creditors yung pinag-uutangan and of course the community in general when we say minimize dapat kasali sa pagmamanage ng risk is yung mga plano natin para kahit papaano is that hindi lahat or hindi uh, kahit papaano just for example hindi lahat ng employees ay maapektuhan or hindi gaano kalaki yung impact nito para sa mga employees pero siyempre, di ba, pag sina-shutdown ng isang company, of course, uh, wawala na natrabaho ang mga employees. So, ang um, pinaka-possible na pwedeng gawin dito is that, for example, meron pa namang ibang branch, ibang planta ang company, pwede nilang i-deploy sa ibang lugar muna yung iba, pero yung iba, ipatigil muna, at least doon, ma-minimize lang kung, ma-minimize lang yung, um, yung effect ng loss na yon sa mga employees. Sa mga customers, of course, Um, um, dahil dahil nawalan nga ng branch doon for example yung planta nagsara um, na i mean bumaba yung stock or inventory ng ng business so of course para ma-minimize natin yung na ma-feel ng mga ma-minimize natin yung effect ng loss na yon sa mga customers of course dapat magdoble kayo yung ibang um, planta natin para ma-provide pa rin yung mga kailangan ng mga customers just for example na um, na bawasan ng 10% yung supply natin or yung ginagawa natin yung inventory natin so of course yung ibang branch or yung ibang planta syempre um, um, tataas yung productivity nila dapat ng 10% or yung ginagawa nila yung products na nabubuo nila eh, dapat tataas rin ng 10% para makabawi pa rin. When it comes to suppliers naman, pwede naman na kahit nag-shutdown yung planta, pwede naman, di ba, na iisa lang naman yung supplier ng um, company, yun na lang, bababa lang yung, yung sale ng, ng supplier na yun. Ganun, yung creditors natin, and of course, the community. Dapat part siya ng um, plans and decisions ng mga risk managers kung paano um, Um, iso survive paano yung um, mag-continue yung operation ng business, lahat-lahat ng buong operation ng business para magsimula let after a loss, dapat kasali yon kasali lahat-lahat or dapat i-consider lahat ng risk managers, lahat-lahat hindi dapat may iiwan or walang dapat yung huwag na natin, isa't aside na lang natin to dapat kasama pati yung community, lahat-lahat na and yun na yun Punta na tayo kay Hana para siya naman ang mag-discuss sa mga susunod. Now, let's identify the risk management process. The first one is to identify the kind of loss exposure. The first one implies that kailangan muna natin alamin ang problema para malaman natin ang solusyon. Kasi, in simple words, hindi natin masusulasyon na isang bagay kung hindi natin alam ang problema. Loss exposure means it is the possibility of financial loss that a particular entity or, or an organization faces. We will tackle about more on this topic on the next slide. We can know the different loss exposures by different ways such as risk analysis, questionnaires and checklists, physical inspection, flowchart, financial statements, historical loss data, and etc. The second one is to measure and analyze the loss exposure. Kailangan natin alamin ang possible effect ng loss exposures. We should be able to know kung ano ang pinaka nagko-cause ng worst loss sa business or yung maximum possible loss na pwedeng mangyari sa business habang nag-exist ito. 
There are two estimates for each type of loss exposure. The first one is loss frequency. Yung possibleng bilang ng losses na pwede exist during a period of time. The second one is loss severity. This pertains to the probable size of the losses that may occur. The third one is to select appropriate combination of techniques for treating the loss exposures. We have here risk control and under it are three methods, avoidance, loss prevention, and loss reduction. Avoidance means na may mga loss na pwede natin hindi ma-acquire or if we can avoid it, then let's avoid it. Loss prevention naman is to minimize the effects of certain loss while loss reduction naman is to minimize the effect of certain loss after they occur. The second technique is risk financing wherein it involves money. It refers to techniques that provide repayment of losses after they occur. There are three methods also. It is retention, non-insurance transfer, and insurance transfer. Retention or complete retention means na ina-absorb ng company ang lahat ng potential loss rather than i-transfer ito sa insurance company. Or in other words, it is the acceptance of losses. While non-insurance transfer naman, it is also called as contractual risk transfer wherein tina-transfer yung risk sa other party other than insurance company. The third one is insurance. Insurance company are paid at premium and documented between the insurer and the company. One precise example is yung pill health insurance rin. Kapag nausipital yung isang tao, yung pill health ang isa sa tulong na magbabayad ng almost half of your payments. Like for example naman sa business, kapag naka-acquire ng loss ang business, pwede na itong ipabayad sa insurance company kung saan nga ito kung saan siya nagbabayad ng insurance. The last one is to implement and monitor the risk management program wherein you should be able to outline the firm's objective and policies and educate the top-level executives. Furthermore, you should give the risk manager greater authority and provide standards for judging risk manager's performance. Now, let's proceed to the kinds of loss exposures. The first one is property loss exposure. This means that a condition that presents the possibility that a person or organization will sustain a loss resulting from damage, including destruction, taking, or loss of use to a property in which that person or organization has financial interest. In simple words, property loss exposures, the loss will possibly result to a destruction or loss of a property. This is possibly caused by a disaster, accident, catastrophes, etc. Like for example, kapag umabagkyo or nagkakaroon ng lindol, there is always a risk na pwedeng masira ang factory ng isang kumpanya. Likewise, kahit walang bagyo, pwede itong masunog or any other bad things may happen to the factory. The second one is liability loss exposure. Liability can occur when an individual or an organization is held legally responsible for the injury or damage suffered by another person or organization. The possibility of being sued is liability loss exposure. Like for example, kapag may kasakit or na-injured dahil sa product na binibenta ng company, then the company is obliged to comp compensate for the damage done. For example, napapanood natin sa ibang videos na kapag may damage or nag-cause ng injury yung isang product, sinisend ng customer yung pictures sa proof doon sa supplier. And yung supplier naman or yung company, nagpapadala sila na mas marami pang product as a compensation for their mistake or for the damage they did. The third one is business income loss exposure. A condition that presents possibility of loss caused by reduction in business or net income. This type of loss exposure na encounter natin minsan ito sa mga nare-record natin na sample journal entries or financial statements wherein invest na mag-acquire yung company ng net income ay nagkakaroon sila ng net loss dahil mas marami silang expenses. 
The fourth one is human resources loss exposures. These are losses resulting from workers' injuries, disability, death, retirement, and turnover of a firm's personnel. These loss exposure is caused by its workers, wherein workers' absences can cause a huge impact on the business. Like for example, in a dressmaking company, kapag yung taong naka-assign sa cutting section is nag-absent, then maaantala yung buong production because walang gagawa sa ginagawa niya. Either mag assign yung employer ng substitute, pero yung substitute can never be compared to the worker na naka-assign talaga doon. The fifth one is crime loss exposures. It is the potential liability losses resulting from criminal acts by people or others directed or allowed to commit crimes. Best example is theft wherein most ng companies ay nanakawan and minsan yung sarili pa nilang employees. Also example sa mga nanood natin movies minsan sa TV mag apply yung isang worker or employee sa isang company, then may balak pala siyang masama sa business na pag nakawan ito. Number six, employee benefit loss exposure. It is the failure to pay promise benefits. It may be caused by business income loss kung saan walang kita yung company or mababa yung kita ng company, kaya they cannot compensate the promise benefit. Number seven is the foreign loss exposures wherein it refers to loss people undertake when making various transactions in foreign countries. It may happen kapag yung product na binibenta mo ay hindi patok sa ibang bansa or hindi tumabenta sa ibang bansa. Like for example, gusto mo magbenta ng Filipino ramen sa Korea pero hindi mo ito masyado mabibenta kasi magkaiba tayo ng taste wherein yung ramen mo hindi gaano, hindi kasing ang hang ng mga ramen na gusto ng mga Koreano. The next one is intangible property loss exposures. It is a condition that presents a possibility of sustaining loss of properties that have no physical substance which are also often referred to as intellectual property so be careful on sharing your ideas like for example sa napapanood natin minsan sa business kung saan ninanakaw yung ideas ng main character about sa business proposal niya the ninth and the last one is the failure to comply with government rules and regulations it happens mostly to legal companies kung saan hindi sila makakapag-comply kasi hindi nila ginagawa yung rules and regulations ng government.